thing we've learned about this vintage leather handbag, it's that he has the full support of one important group. Who are you voting for? Donald Trump. Who are you voting for? Donald Trump. Donald Trump. That's right, the working class. That homogenous group of white male coal miners, white male factory workers, and the rest of the all-white male village people. <laughs> Who are these working class Americans? Why do they love Trump? And why do they look exactly the same? I decided to find out. I traveled to Western Pennsylvania to make a heart-wrenching piece about the struggles of the Rust Belt's racist, I mean, sorry, economically anxious white working class. First stop, a local bar to interview some salt-of-the-earth working class heroes. Okay, reporter, reporter, oh, they're already taken. Oh, there's a good one. God damn it. So I asked my producers to find me some working class people that no one was talking to. Hold up. Hi, um, I'm here to talk to a panel of working class people. Do you know where they are? Yes. Yes. That's us. Okay. All right. Uh, this is not the interview I prepped for. Okay. First question. Why did you vote for Trump? Uh-uh. 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 Okay. And no coal miners? That's all you hear about is the coal miners. Mm -hmm. There's cooks. There's nurses. And they're not all white. Is she saying the working class isn't just for white people? It's... Puerto Ricans, mm -hmm. African American, Mexican, but nobody wants to see that. All they want to see is a white person with a white man, a white woman, and white little children. But his name is Jimmy, and he wears a hard hat and overalls. And I wear a hard hat and overalls. There you go. And steel toe yeah. shoes yeah. and safety yeah. glasses yeah. and working glasses. Right. I am the new Jimmy. We are all the new Jimmy. Yes. Right. Yes. And they had all sorts of jobs, like Jimmy the steel worker, and Jimmy the security guard, and Jimmy the vegan chef. In fact, minorities will be the majority of the working class by 2032, yet no one seems to be talking to them. So what stories are we not hearing? I don't know how many nights like I go to bed a little stressed out, thinking like, oh my god, I have this and that to pay for the month. Being a single parent, my paychecks don't stretch that far. I feel like you're saying that you have actual economic anxiety. Exactly. Yeah, a little. It's not just like a code word for, I'm afraid of people from other countries. No. <laughs> Got it, okay. Honestly, can I say honestly? Yes. When it comes to the working class people, we don't have a life. Mm. Our life is to make sure that we show up at work okay. and take care of what we need to take care that of. That is true. Because it came to a point that my youngest daughter one day came out and said, Mom, give me a picture. I'm like, why? She goes, so I can know what you look like every day because we barely yeah. see each other. Mm -hmm. right. A lot of times I have a, one white gentleman who's a supervisor on my left, and generally it's another white gentleman on my right, but once the uh, representative comes in, he'll make conversation with the supervisor or the table operator, and I'm the one that he should be talking to. They don't speak to you. That's right. Do you ever think about throwing any of those gentlemen into a pool of hot molten steel? <laughs> Why were they feeling so forgotten? The president's constantly fluffing the working class. Toot, toot, toot. Is Donald Trump talking about you when he talks about the working class? He's not talking about my interests, my concerns, my health care. But Donald Trump is a champion of the little man. He keeps his foot down on the little man. Let, let that foot up and let us rise up a little bit. He went to Puerto Rico not too long ago to throw paper towels at people. Well, to be fair, strange. it was very wet there. <laughs> <laughs> what would it mean? if a political party or a politician actually listened to you. I don't know if we can count on them to come in and save us. I think we need to save ourselves. And it comes down to us running mm -hmm. for office. We need to encourage our coworkers, people on the level of us, to step up and run. Right. I think the best representation of us is us. But with our politicians and media romanticizing one very specific, very white story over and over, could the minority working class ever get their due? Do you think they'll write think pieces about working class robots before they write about working class black women? Yes. It's a possibility, yes. yeah. Right, right, right. What's it gonna take for people to hear your voices?
They don't want to know what we go through. Why? Because if they do, they will have to do something about it. But I knew one way to tell their story that people couldn't resist. Could we make a great song? And then maybe people will listen. <laughs> look, look. Right. Yes. We were born in the USA, trying to fight to get our way. And since Bruce Springsteen still reeling from the great microphone shortage of 1984, we took matters into our own hands with a song for the forgotten, forgotten working class hero. I see you cross the bar with that same old story. Coal miners talking about their West Virginia plight. Baby, I see you pining for that old working class glory. Come on, darling media, don't be blinded by the white. Working just cover white dudes. Working class, your story has got to include. Working class, people who crimp the wires and change your ties and work the fries. They work. 